So today we will be seeing the different parts of Hano Wide View Articulator. So let's progress. Okay, so this is a Hano Wide View Articulator. Now, why is it called as a Wide View Articulator? Because as you can see from the posteriorly, it is having a wide view, which we, we can see enable us to see properly. Okay, that's the reason why it is called as Hano Wide View Articulator. And it is an Arcan type of articulator. Now, uh, what do you mean by Arcan means the upper member will have the condylar guidance and the lower member will have the condylar element, which is as like in upper member that is in, we have the glenoid fusa represents the condylar guidance and condyles represent the condylar element. So in this articulator also, this is the condylar guidance. You can see this moving. This is the condylar guidance and this is present on the upper member. And the condylar element, which you can see this brass ball head, that is the condylar element and that is present on the lower member of the articulator. It is present on the lower member. You can see here, it is present on the lower member of the articulator. Now, uh, that's the reason why it is called as the condylar, sorry, it is called as an arcan type of articulator. Now, to see more about the condylar guidance, uh, you can see the condylar guidance, they act as a control center of this articulator and we can adjust it accordingly to simulate the functions which are being happening in the glenoid fossa. not all but some of the functions. It's a semi-adjustable articulator. Now you can also see a condylar track. Okay, this is a condylar track, the line, this one, this one is a condylar track and this condylar track is inclined on the horizontal transverse axis from zero i don't know whether you can appreciate it in this video but i can show you a picture inside the values ranging from zero to plus 60 and also zero to minus minus 20 it is there markings are there i can provide you the picture side piece so we can accordingly adjust and this is called as the horizontal condyla guidance and this is given by the patient's protrusive movement Okay, a protrusive record. Uh, as such, we will record the horizontal guidance and then we calculate the lateral guidance from the formula L, L is equal to H by 8 plus 12, where H is the horizontal guidance which we get by the protrusive record. That is the only guidance which we are getting from the patient. The others are the measured values. Now, um, yeah, the horizontal guidance we have seen, horizontal guidance, we have seen the horizontal, that is the condylar track and uh, condylar track, this is horizontally, I mean horizontal transverse axis, it is, there are inclinations to horizontal transverse axis, same wise, we can also adjust it vertically, okay, that forms the lateral condylar guidance which we said just now or you can also see it as the progressive Bennett angle. Now that is from, you can, this is a thumb screw for loosening and you can adjust it accordingly. You can see the markings over here. It's from 0. This marking should coincide with this 0. That is 0 degree, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30. These are the lateral condylar guidance. This is not recorded from the patient. This is recorded from the horizontal condylar guidance which we get. We calculate from that value the lateral condylar guidance this is the only condylar guidance horizontal condylar guidance will be the only guidance which we are getting from the patient that you have to be very thorough in mind and here also there is a marking you can see you can see a line you have to coincide this line okay and this here line that you can coincide with uh, the values of 60 50 40 like that it goes on so uh, in this articulator you can see that this condylar track is a closed condylar track so it does not allow any uh, accidental disengagement of the upper member so you can see that this falls under the series of 183 series this articulator in 184 this there is no any closed condylar track available okay so this is a closed condylar track and then we can now see about this is the uh, centric lock which is very important why because now you can see as I can move this mandible, the upper member of the mandible, but after getting the records and everything, and I will give a center when I loose, tighten this thumb screw, I mean not thumb screw, sorry, centric lock, 
now the articulator will only move now i cannot move in any direction but we can i can only move it in the opening and closing movements are only possible with this articulator so that is the function of the centric lock and here you have the condylar shaft this condylar shaft it is attached or it is being uh, uh, given into the wings of the lower member of the articulator it is set by the factory itself okay this is a condylar shaft which has been engaged into the wings of the lower member of the articulator so with that we finish off this side uh, now moving on to the incisal pin now let's see more about the incisal pin okay sorry before that this is the portion where this on into this road we can engage our facebook uh, for the next coming video will be the parts of Facebook and for the third video we'll see how to engage Facebook to the uh, Hano articulator. Okay, Hano phase H2 Facebook will be articulate uh, will be will combine both and we'll do it in the coming videos, upcoming videos. So that's now moving on to the incisal pin. As you can see the incisal pin. Uh, we have a rounded end. I will show you here. It's also you have a thumb screw which we loosen and this forms the also this incisive pin This forms the Vertical diamond provides a vertical dimension for the articulator so that you can make it the upper member and the lower members parallel Okay, if the screw was if sorry if this incisive pin was not there it would simply collapse Okay, so now to tell about the incisal pin, it has two ends. You can see this. Uh, you can, if you have a an articulator, please keep it with you aside, and you can see accordingly. Now this end is rounded end, and you have the other end which is chisel shaped end. Okay, uh, and also from the rounded end, approximately or it is almost one inch from the rounded end, rounded tip one inch below you can see a dark line actually it's a groove you can appreciate it while seeing it okay it's a groove and from that groove you can have five calibrations above and five calibrations below each one mil mm in diameter there is sorry not diameter each one mm apart okay now what is the significance of this dark brown groove uh, sorry dark black groove is that you have to orient your face bow that uh, the upper member I'll show you is aligned with the top edge of the uh, yeah the upper member is aligned to this mid groove okay it should be like this that means five markings should be above and after that you have to tighten it okay now uh, we have we also have other additional two markings you can see here this is the marking at 37 mm and this is a marking at 54 mm now 37 mm marking was given by bonville which is on part of a bonville triangle and this 54 mm this was uh, given from some uh, researchers uh, the researchers who gave this was frank r loschilo if i'm pronunciation is correct loschilo and mark apple bomb okay these were the two researchers who have given they have given this article uh, research papers in the journal of prosthetic dentistry in 1978 according to them this 54 mm this forms the average landmark for what for aligning the incisal edge okay once you keep it i'll orient it uh, we'll orient it accordingly we have the mid marking mid marking on the upper edge of the member and you tighten it with your thumb screw and yeah one second okay fine after tightening it they said that this 54 mm line okay this forms the average landmark it will form an average landmark in the indian population for alignment of the incisal edge of the incisal edge of the upper centrals when making a Facebook transfer. Okay, that is the significance of this 54 mm line. Now, um, other than that, you can say that why do we have two ends? That's the question which comes the next. So we have a chisel end and a rounded end. Chisel end is used for this, uh, this 
or to say mechanical incisive guide for this one uh, and this rounded end is used when you are having any customized or closer sorry customized incisal guide then we use the rounded tip if we are using this mechanical guide then we are using this chisel end okay and also the this chisel it is almost 5.56 mm in length you can see here the guide on the guide also it is having that uh, it is you can see yeah this is almost 5.56 mm yeah that's all about the incisal pin now we can move on to the uh, incisal guide incisal guide uh, this is also adjustable by all means this adjustable incisal guide it will provide us the anterior guidance okay so this gives the anterior guidance uh, now it can be adjusted how let's see uh, we have two screws that is this can you appreciate can you see i guess the the upper one that is called as the platform screw the upper one and the lower one is called as the small lock nut okay the upper one is the platform screw why it is called platform screw because if you loosen it okay when you loosen it you can move this platform you can move the incisal guide okay that is the reason why it is called as the platform lock screw yeah and then the down one is called as a small lock nut now the small lock nut uh, what is its significance you can move on loosening the small lock nut you can move this antero posteriorly from the horizontal zero degree now this is at zero degree horizontally from that you can move this to antero posteriorly okay now here the markings are being given you can if you have an articulator you can look into if or else i'll provide a picture of this also separately on this side here there are also calibrations from zero degree now it is at zero degree zero degree to 60 degree they have the markings okay i'm sorry it is on this side the markings are given on this side uh, you can see there there are markings from zero to 60 degree positive inclinations this is for protrusion okay it is uh, 60 degree positive inclination of protrusion and uh, lock nut you can say they can tighten it so now i'll keep it at zero degree and horizontal t zero zero degree and we are tightening it we are tightening the small lock nut now it also now you might be wondering what are these two silver uh, things right yes these are called as the thumb nuts uh, we have the thumb nut and the thumb screws okay both we have uh, show you one second now you must be wondering uh, what are these two yes these two these are having two elements on it the first one is called as the thumb nut and this is called as the thumb screw thumb nut actually this is just uh, a reference like you know you okay i'll see you this is the thumb screw with thumb screw we can separately adjust the lateral wings you can see can you see this um it is being elevated by thumb screw from zero horizontal to a 45 degree markings are given the inner side over here the markings are being provided over here both the side you can do that is with the thumb screw you can elevate the lateral wings you can adjust the lateral wings okay from zero degree horizontal to a degree of 45 and that is being placed in uh, or fixed by a thumb nut okay the calibrations are very small these calibrations and they are just for marked for a reference purpose okay so that's it about the incisal guide and now uh, uh, here we have a orbital indicator or uh, you can see yeah to this on top of this the face bow's pointer of face bow will come okay orbital pointer of face bow will be orienting on top of this we'll show that after taking a section session on Facebook then after that we'll see how it is engaged on this articulator okay this comes with a mounting plate that is which is separable which can be removed now for example we are um, we got a record occlusal record we transferred Facebook we took the lateral so we took the horizontal condylar guidance from the patient and accordingly we have set the lateral condylar guidance 
uh, with the formula L is equal to h by 8 plus 12. And after that, we got another one patient. Now we have to remove this. We need this articulator again, isn't it? So what can we do is that we can remove the cast using this mounting lace. So this comes with a threaded bra. It's a threaded brass insert. You can see. Okay, and these. Okay. Uh, then it has many looting slots and keyways where the plaster can engage properly. So that's with the mounting plates. It's not properly fixed. Yeah. Now that's with the mounting plates. Uh, so that's all about the Hano articulator. So this is an enlarged view of the condyle, horizontal condyle guidance. It is inclined to the horizontal axis. Okay, you can see over here the markings are there. For here there will be 0 degree from 0 plus 60 and minus 20. So this should coincide with these markings. While zeroing of the articulator, this point should coincide with 30. You can see this one. Okay, that is zeroing which we'll see in the next coming upcoming videos. So this is the condylar guidance. This is the lateral condylar guidance which we get from the uh, formula L is equal to H by H by 8 plus 12. So uh, this you can see again the calibrations are given, markings are given on the vertical axis. This should coincide with 30 degree while zeroing of the articulate. We will see that again. And this is the incisal rod you have seen the blunt end and the chisel type. There are markings at 37 and 54 millimeters and you have a one inch dark marking. This is how the incisal pin should be placed. Here there is a uh, incisal guide and this is this length is 5.56 approximately and You can see the dark marking is coinciding with the upper member of the articulator and also I have forgot to say that maximum protrusive we can, which we can do with this articulator, this Hano articulator is 6 mm and retrusion is 3 mm from the centric. So if you have more than that then we cannot reproduce that with this articulator. And these are the wings, you can see lateral wings, these are the inclinations for the wings. And this is for the anteroposterior movement, you can incline it accordingly, these are the markings for it. This is the screws which we use. This is the thumb nut and this is the thumb screw. So with that we end with the parts of Hano Articulator and next will be uh, the parts of a phase boot. Thank you.